Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Whiskey Wonders. And today we are back in San Diego in perhaps one of the best Costco's in pretty much all of Southern California, which is the Costco on Morena Boulevard in PB. And uh, this day today, uh, it did not disappoint uh, because you're going to see we see some pretty amazing Japanese whiskeys showing up all at once, even at the higher, newer <laughs> MSRP, which makes me sad. But we are starting to see things like Nika from the Barrel, as well as the truly underrated Centauri Hakushu 12. And we also see a Hakushu 18 floating around in the background there. And in fact, that Hakushu 18 lasted all day. I came in the morning, it was there. I came in the evening, it was there. <laughs> kind of made me sad, but also means, you know, more Hakushu 18 for me. But it does kind of show what effects the price hikes for Centauri are having on, you know, the general whiskey drinking population, especially on the Japanese side. So today, uh, we are in the Costco Marina Boulevard. We see some amazing Japanese whiskeys. And before we get to the video, if you like these videos, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff <laughs> that we got cooking up for you, and we have a lot of amazing stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, because it does really help the channel grow. And again, we are so, so thankful for that. But also, you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays and, you know, sometimes in between. All right, now, let's get down to the video. So today, uh, while we are starting off here and while we're getting <laughs> a little warmed up, let's do a real quick whiskey check. And you know what? Today, I'm going to be enjoying something that has kind of been holding up some of the wires in the background here. Not where it should have been, but I just I had lost track of it over this time. Uh, but I've been meaning to try it, and it looks interesting, which is the entry-level Nika Day. So, you know, we're doing the From the Barrel, uh, so it only couldn't hurt to maybe try something at the beginning stages of what Nika offers. So let's see if we can get, uh, get this off. I will say that the top comes off much easier on this one than some of the other ones that we've tried. Like that. See if we can get a pop. Nope. No pop today. Put the daily screen screw off. Well, at least let's see if we can get some juice here. Oh, yeah. A freshie. <laughs> All right, and it's whiskey. Because, let's be honest, really, you can never drink too much of it. <laughs> you can only just really sort of drink it too fast. Cheers. Mmm, that is way better than it should be for holding up the wires in the back. <laughs> All right, so first up for today is one of my favorite offerings uh, from Nika, which is going to be this Nika from the barrel. I always have a hard time not saying straight from the barrel. <laughs> it's Nika from the barrel. Now, a couple of things are really important to note about this bottle. The first is that um, it is in a bottle that is basically nearly impossible to pour without getting it everywhere, <laughs> as I think we saw in another video. I thought the Hibiki Harmonies were tough, but man, these Nika ones, this is from the barrels, are just designed by like an evil genius to make it impossible to drink without spilling it all over the place like Ric Flair in the 80s. Second is that there is a very early 20th century like medicinal feel to the bottle. It looks like something the apothecary would have in their medicine cabinet to, you know, <laughs> cure the vapors. Now, the Nika from the barrel is not technically a Japanese whiskey, despite what you may uh, think, especially because it has Japanese whiskey reading all over it. But it actually is not a Japanese whiskey, but rather it is a world whiskey, a sort of half in, half out of the true Japanese whiskey debate. This is because it also includes scotch in it, uh, as well as additional Japanese produced whiskeys. And in fact, over a hundred different blends all go into making the Nika from the barrel. It is out of the distillery uh, Nika, which is the second most popular, or I guess most prolific distiller in Japan, uh, of course, behind Suntory, and is composed of both single malt and single grain whiskeys. It doesn't have an age statement on it, and I wouldn't say that it is necessarily allocated um, because it is around, but it's not always around on the shelf. So if you can find it uh, at a pretty good price, then it's definitely worth picking up. And usually it is pretty widely available here in the United States as well as in Europe. Although in Europe, for some reason, it generally is less expensive. Speaking of the cost, we saw this one in uh, the Costco on Morena Boulevard. And since we had been running a little low on it, uh, I decided to pick one up. 
Um, and the cost was exceptionally good at $58.99, which is, of course, exceedingly good, especially against uh, some of the next lowest cost prices that you could find at BevMo for $74.99, or even at Total Wine. And this is one of the rare cases that Total Wine is actually more expensive. Uh, we recently saw it for $78.99. Um, so that means that by buying it at Costco, I ended up saving $16 off the BevMo price, or 27.1%. Also, as a side note, since I found it while going through the footage for uh, the uh, Nika from the barrel, I found uh, from our most recent trip to Paris uh, that it was for sale at 46.50 euros. 46 euros and 50 cents? I don't know how they say that. <laughs> uh, which comes out to US dollars at $51.75. Uh, and that is even with the VAT. So I'm not sure why there's such a big difference from the American market and the European market, but, uh, you know, maybe it's that extra 50 milliliters. Now, the one most defining trait about the Nika Straight from the Barrel um, really is the fact that it breaks with the tradition of being at a 43% ABV uh, that we see on most and many Japanese whiskeys, because there are some that are way higher than that, but those are buku bucks. Uh, you can see right here the ABV on it is at 51.4%, which is <laughs> exactly where I like to see it at. And to me, this sort of indicates that maybe the FTB is a Japanese whiskey, a Japanese whiskey um, that is really more designed for Western and specifically for American markets where we tend to be a bunch of ABV hounds. The tasting notes on it, though, that I could find, including some of my own, mention things like sweetness, cloves, oakiness, nutmeg, cinnamon, and you definitely get an unabashed ABV uh, through line that goes through the entirety of the sip so uh, for me i also find a, a little bit of a like a band-aid like medical equipment flavor in there which i don't hate <laughs> i definitely don't hate it uh, it almost feels like like antiseptic <laughs> flavor and it does kind of sneak up on you and it thinks did i just end up drinking medical grade whiskey <laughs> the overall scores that i could find on the nika from the barrel with mine included throwing in there uh, averages out to a very favorable 91 points out of 100 so Obviously, it was a buy for me because I did buy this one. And especially at a price that's around that $50 price range, <laughs> that is a buy all day, every day. So that is the Nika from the barrel. And if you always liked Japanese whiskey and thought, you know what, I wanted something with a little more oomph to it, <laughs> FTB is a good choice. Now, next up is a whiskey that seems to be hitting the Costco's in force over the last month or so, along with its siblings, the Yamazaki 12 and the Hiriki Harmony, which is this Hokushu. Well, the other thing is that I always find it very interesting that the Yamazaki 12 uh, always gets all the hype and always gets all the excitement uh, and oftentimes gets the higher prices. But the Hakushu 12, at least to me, is definitely well deserving of equal praise and equal sought afterness. Uh, my guess is that uh, there are probably a lot of people who love peated whiskey, like myself, uh, but there's a lot of people who don't really like peated whiskey, and I think that that probably plays into people liking the Hakushu 12 over the Yamazaki 12. The Hakushu 12 is, of course, the younger brother in the line uh, to the Yamazaki 12. Uh, it is distilled at the Hakushu Distillery, which sits at the base of Mount Kaikoma, and is a forest slash bird sanctuary. Um, it has a lot of palate similarities if you are a traditional scotch drinker to something like a Ben Romac, which is also delicious, but of course it is going to be a little slightly peated. Additionally, if you are to compare it with the Yamazaki, you know, it is gonna be much darker and much more brooding than the Yamazaki. And I think in many ways, that is why it sort of gets the short end of the stick with popularity. It's just kind of more of an acquired specific <laughs> taste. It is of course aged 12 years old. It is matured in ex-bourbon, ex-sherry, and Mizanara casks. In this one we see, unfortunately, but that is the way the world goes, at the new Ray's Sun Toy price of $145.99. Clutch the pearls, because <laughs> it is a big step up. I know we did a video recently about the Sun Toy price hikes. I'll put a link up here uh, for it. Um, but back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean last year, it was $99.99. And it had been there for multiple years. And then all of a sudden, it seems like they squeezed in all the year's price hikes all at once. On their birthday too. Shame on you, Centauri. 
but still even at the hundred and forty five dollars and ninety nine cents that is going to be better than what you can find it for at the bevmo price which is currently at 199 dollars and 99 cents or even at the total wine price which is at 159 dollars and 99 cents and i have even seen it as high as 219 dollars here in a local big box grocery store um, which is getting quite close it's getting <laughs> paper thin close uh, to highway robbery or uh, what we like to think of as a mom and pop liquor store markup levels of gouging that being said, uh, we did not buy this one there. We Luckily, we had got it previously at the lower price. Thank you to the Whiskey Gods. Um, but, uh, you know, if we had picked this one up at the $145.99, we would have still saved $14 off the next closest price at Total Wine, or 9.59%, which is still pretty good, but, you know, it's really not that far off at this point. Now, the ABV on the Hushu 12 is going to be uh, pretty standard uh, for Japanese whiskey at 43%, which you can see right there, or 86 proof, which, again, is not going to be anything to write home about as far as ABV goes. But, of course, this is not something you're going to buy if you are looking for a fire-breathing level of ABV experience. So <laughs> that's what you would save your money for for the Nika from the barrel because it definitely is a heavy hitter. But again, it was, I think, at least specifically designed for the American or at least the Western market. And <laughs> technically, it's not Japanese whiskey. So, you know, there are things with the FTB that are <laughs> contrary to that. Um, but the Hikushu 12 is going to be actual, real deal, no BS, Japanese whiskey. The tasting notes on the Hikushu, including mine, uh, mention things like light peat, a lot of fruit and citrus, saltines, a vanilla, baked chocolate, mint, and uh, kind of like a, a Thai basil hint in there in the in there as well as some tannins all of which again make it a really truly amazing uh whiskey especially if you're going to be drinking it with like a cooked meat or yakitori or barbecue or steak or something like that oh man <laughs> i'm gonna thinking about it now the review scores that i could find on this one are quite high uh, at the high 80s uh, is where they would be without mine included and then throwing mine in there brings it up to 90 points out of 100 um, so it's definitely something I would recommend to buy for someone who likes the nuance of a Japanese style of whiskey, but also likes a more scotch peaty and brininess. But yeah, I mean, again, this one's going to be a buy. It is a bit of a kick in the pants to have the raised prices by 45%. Yeah, that's a bummer. But I guess, <laughs> think about it this way. That's just sort of the way the world works. And one day we'll be telling our grandkids, oh, when back in my day, <laughs> the Hakusha was $99. And they're going to be like, get out of here, old man. Japanese whiskey went extinct in the 2040s. <laughs> Either way, this one's going to be a buy. Uh, and we had enough of it to tide us over. So with the higher prices, we didn't pick one up. But uh, I'm sure glad it's still available. So that is the Hakusha. Well, all right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wanders at the Costco on Morena Boulevard. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And in fact, <laughs> I hope that you enjoy all of our videos, uh, whether it is the Wanders or the Hauls or the reviews or the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you. And <laughs> trust me, we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you. And if you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel grow. And we are so, so thankful for that. But also, I like to think it is good for your whiskey mojo. It pleases the whiskey gods. And you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. All right, now, before I go, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, like the FTB or the Gusha 12 or the Yamazaki 12, and uh, I <laughs> but if you do, uh, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And in this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'm out, and adios.